my name this is Kobe Bryant, 17 years old, with the hunger, the motivation, and the desire to be the best possible basketball player that I could be. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to a special episode of the Hoop Call. Um, we have to talk Kobe Bryant um, on a year after his, on the anniversary of his death. Um, really, really, obviously, just disturbing um, and tragic events that happened 26th of January 2020. And me and Ollie thought we'd hop on just to talk about Kobe Bryant and his legacy. Um, essentially, you know, bring some of our listeners who know of the person Kobe Bryant, just, you know, as the character, but don't know too much about him from maybe a basketball sense or beyond that. So that's what we want to bring to you guys. Um, and hopefully you guys can contribute. And if not, hopefully you've learned something. So here we go, Ollie. Thanks so much for taking the time out to um, glad, to, glad to be a part of it today. To join us, um, Ollie, just a crazy Kobe fan, crazy Kobe fan, and um, I know Ollie particularly really wanted to do this. So, twenty-four minute episode in his honour. Let's talk about it. So, what we're going to do? We're going to talk about his legacy on the court first, and then off the court in terms of how it's affected us individually. So for those of you who know about Kobe Bryant, let me put it into context from an NBA accolades point of view, okay? I've got, I've got some accolades here. So he's a five-time NBA champion. Two of those times he was finals MVP. Obviously, he was an MVP of the regular season. Only once, which um, you know any basketball critique will say was ridiculous. He should have been a multiple-time MVP. He's won the MVP of the All-Star Game four times as well. Check this as well. In terms of longevity of his career, 15-time All-NBA, which means 15 times he was one of the best players in the NBA as selected by the media and experts. That's a, that's a ridiculous number, just so you know. People know Kobe for his scoring, you know, he's, a, he's attacking in 10 and, you know, he is a two-time NBA scoring champion. But also, what some people might not know, he was 12 times NBA all-defense, which showed how all-encompassing he was as a player. Um, slam dunk contest champion. I did not know that before today. Did not know that. But, you know, again, just just shows you the type of things he's done in his career. So many records he broke. He came into the league directly from high school. And I believe at the time, he was the youngest all-star in NBA history. Um, you can see some really, really good clips online of him in his first all-star game. And and basically how he's gone from there. So there he is from an accolades point of view. That's just, you know, that's just the highlights of his accolades. But Oli, I'm going to throw this to you now. Just explain, just from a more technical aspect, in terms of his basketball legacy, what what did he bring to the court, and ultimately, what has he left behind after his after his um, retirement in 2016? Well, I think the only mental, you know, from from what he had on the court, and you know, the the, the mentality side of things, the only one that could rival. Kobe was was Michael Jordan exactly and yeah. and to put that into perspective and to be fair he's you know the the one thing that Kobe had which has carried over beyond basketball was was his mentality and the the, the Mamba mentality which everyone every which everyone knows about yeah, these days was. and it was the I saw a quote of how how you'd sort of break it down. It was is is a, is about an, he he was obsessed. It's an obsession about prioritizing your. It wasn't just on, about basketball, 
about his sort of professional goals and how he basically took over how, how he, his life. And it was on his, it wasn't just, as I said, it wasn't just on the basketball. It was, um, you know, uh, on for his businesses, um, you know, his, his family as well. And, and he's, you know, and, and, the, and the daughters that he's had. So, yeah. uh, and the, I mean, the, he won an Oscar for God's sakes. He won an Oscar mate, for people who didn't know that. Exactly. And a lot of, you know, he, he, this was built into NBA culture so much that he, you know, it was in, in the off season, he would have um, kind of like a select group of players um, who he would sort of take under his wing. Um, and it was, you know, it was, it was a privilege to and work with Kobe in the off season, you know, um, one more, the most recent one was with, with Jason Tatum. Um, and, you know, I think uh, um, Andrew Wiggins also, I know we sort of clown on him a little bit, but to have, you know, for Kobe to sort of see that, that dog in him as well. So, uh, yeah, he's, it's, I don't think he's second to none. Um, I said the only comparison was, is, is, is MJ. Is MJ. Yeah. I'd, 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 I'll take that. I would say outside of MJ, who is, I would say the, the most well marketed athlete in sports history and is known just for everything about him outside that and particularly within basketball fan specific folklore I think Kobe Bryant probably has the greatest legacy um as you rightly said with the Mamba mentality um people Kyrie Jason Tay yeah literally there's no point going through the list goes on everyone was inspired by him Interesting for those who don't know, he was called himself the Black Mamba because self-proclaimed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mate, he's, I think he's one of the only few players to ever nickname don himself his... a nickname. Yeah, exactly. Normally, and you one, get of, the, given and a one of the greatest. <laughs> the thing is that the Black Mamba is a, is a snake, right? But it's a specific type of snake. It's one of the few snakes in the world that is known to attack completely unprovoked. And um, and that's what he kind of named himself as. It's a killer. He said that because that words with this. When I step on the court, I become the black mamba. I am that killer snake. I'm stone cold man, and it reflected in everything he did. Now he works day and night, every day, for years and years and years and years and years. And as time went on. 20 years had passed and he felt that he had accomplished all that he set out to accomplish. But what he come to realize is that the goal that he set out initially of becoming the greatest of all time was a very fickle one. And what he realized that the most important thing in life is how your career moves and touches those around you and how it carries forward to the next generation. Did he realize that's what makes true greatness? Well, the story off the court, off the court. We we talk about him, him on the court, and I really, really recommend you guys go on YouTube, look at his greatest plays, and you'll see just how skilled a basketball player he was. Just the footwork, the ability to get to the get to the hole, finishing at the rim. He's got you know his range was actually very good. Um, no, I don't, I don't, again, don't have to sell him as a basketball player. But as Ollie rightly alluded to, I think his legacy spans way beyond the court. And both myself and Ollie have individual stories that of when Kobe inspired us. And um, we want to just talk about them as well, okay? Now, Ollie, you want to go first or can I go first? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can go first. If yeah. You don't yeah, go on, go on. I'll let Ollie go first and then I'll, I'll kind of close it out. So yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah, it was more sort of like a, a personal experience that, you know, I was I was lucky enough to um, actually see Kobe play live. Oh, wow. um, it was back in 2015 and it was actually his, um, it was 2015, 2016 season. So it was Kobe's last, last year and it was the opening game of the NBA at the Staples Centre. Um, against the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. So it was uh, Carl Anthony Towns' first ever NBA game. Um, Kevin Garnett was playing uh, D'Angelo Russell's first game. And yeah, 
and they had this <clears throat> they had this opening um for kobe um kind of like a kind of like a ceremony for him thanking him for what he's what he's achieved and what he's done and every single person who was in that arena you know if even if it was the tim Wolves fan as well every time kobe got the ball it was just you know every everyone was was off their seats at, at that time and i can remember the i remember the game quite clearly because i think lakers lost but only by one shot i think I remember the last play of the game, Kobe, Kobe actually inbounded the ball to Jordan Clarkson, I believe, and everyone oh was just like, "Give the ball to Kobe, even if." Because uh, I think I think Kobe still dropped twenty odd points, uh, but yeah, it well, was. Hold on, they gave, they gave, to, hold on, they gave, they gave the ball to Jordan Clarkson. Gave the ball, Kobe Kobe Bryant inbound because I remember it clearly. Because Kobe <laughs> inbounded the ball to Jordan Clarkson. Was he trolling? Like what? What happened there? I've, it was. It was. I've not because they called it. They called a timeout. Uh, I think. I think it was literally just one point they were down by, um, and everyone was just, you know, in in uproar. But it was. <laughs> but I, I, I said it was one of those. It's one of those experiences that I'll never forget. Because every every you know because it wasn't that wasn't the greatest of Lakers teams and the only. It was a sellout stadium, and every you know everyone had eight, you know number eight, number twenty four, you know Kobe jerseys on, and every everyone was there was there for him, and you know he had that, uh, you know just just to see him live, it was, a, it, was, it, was a, it was a privilege to see him. Mate, that's unbelievable, Jordan. <laughs> Sorry, the the main if, fo- if fo- I can fo- find <laughs> the clip, if I can find the clip, I'll... but yeah, I mean it's interesting because as you said, I think everyone just. Um, was there for Kobe, right? Like the Lakers in 2015 were not hot, <laughs> frankly, and um, he was the only draw. Just yeah, an unbelievable guy. And to, so you used to see him play live, very, very, very jealous. I didn't actually realise that you'd seen him live. Um, so, you know what, fair play yeah. to you. Fair. Yeah. I was literally staying in the opposite the Staples Centre, and, you know, I've, I've only been watching basketball for a couple of years then, and it was just... Uh, <laughs> You know, yeah, I was, yeah. you know, always a, always a Clippers fan, but you know, I'm not gonna. You're never gonna turn down the opportunity to see to see Kobe live. <laughs> no, you're not. No. Um, yeah, I was actually gonna ask. Like, surely, surely that would have drove you more towards the Lakers and Clippers. I was, I was, I was well, I was, one of the first, you know, experiences of basketball was the um, sort of, I think it was like the two. It was like 2009, maybe 2010 Lakers, um, where it was Kobe and uh, Pau Gasol. And that got me sort of watching more videos, you know, watching the old Lakers with with Shaq. Um, and then even going to that, um, you know, past that with the, with the Showtime Lakers, with Magic, James Worthy, with James Worthy, Michael Cooper. But um, that's like one of the, you know, even I was thinking about um, earlier before we'd done this, with all the great players that, the Lakers had they had the Shacks, the Kareems, the Magics, the the lot, you know Jerry West, the logo, the logo, if, literally logo. Yeah. If you if you asked who was the great, you know, if you asked any Laker who the greatest Laker of all time would be, he would know. I'd say Kobe. Kobe. Don't don't think they'd be wrong at that. I think Magic would come close, surely, because obviously, yeah, he was I think it'd be between Magic and Kobe, but I think Kobe just epitomizes everything that is, you know. The, the winning culture of the Lakers, which it was back then. Yeah, no, incredible, incredible. All right, what we'll do um, in this video, we'll splice this video with highlights and sort of quotes about Kobe so you guys get some context. But I just want to finish by um, saying how he personally affected myself. Now, a couple of things. Firstly, um, obviously I'm based in the UK, but one of my really, really close cousins um, lives in the US and is the ultimate Kobe fan, like beyond the ultimate Kobe fan. He literally cried when he tore his Achilles. And I remember that day clearly. Um, when he tore his Achilles and then sunk two free throws and walked off the court, you know, unaided, which epitomized Kobe once more. My cousin literally cried. It anyway. seemed to be his knee, uh, this, his foot, his ankle, and now his Achilles. Yeah, this time, it's, I don't think he's going to be able to do what he did the last two times where he ran it off and was able to play with the pain. Yeah. I mean, he's not even uh, really going to shoot the free throws. And he could barely make it to the free throw line. Bryant tonight with 32 points, five rebounds, four assists, 
and he is hurting. But the Lakers down by two, and they want him and need him at the free throw line. Got it. Now this next, I mean, after this free throw, I'm going to be very curious to see how he responds, yeah, not backpedaling or whatever he has to do to get to the other end, if in fact he gets to the other end before a foul maybe. Made him. Lakers might foul. They might foul to get him out of the game. That's they have to. Do. Put simply, without Kobe Bryant, we would definitely not have the hoop call or any of my other channels or uh, or projects or productions. Now, Oli, me and Oli, as you guys should know by now, extremely close friends, so Oli can vouch for me here. When Kobe Bryant died, and I think a lot of people shared this sentiment, it was so shocking, not only because of the manner in which it happened, obviously completely unexpected, himself, his daughter, and some other people, um, unfortunately passed away in a tragic um, helicopter crash, um, which I think all of you know, and all of you listening know. It's not only the way it happened, but the fact that it was Kobe... Now, Kobe Bryant, whether you knew a little bit about basketball or a lot or a little bit about sports or a lot, he came across as just invincible, like completely invincible. Like you just, you'll see so many quotes. Everyone said, I just would not have thought he could even be hurt, let alone die, you know? And when that happened, it was a shock to, to everyone. Only the same, like we spoke about it at length on that day. And... Literally, the next day, I started. I picked up a camera and started making content. Literally, the next day, and that was because I realized I was just procrastinating, procrastinating. And the essence of the mama mentality is going for it, being that killer. And I thought, you know what? Let's put um, let's put words and thoughts into action. And that was literally directly as a result of the passing of Kobe Bryant. Obviously, it's sad that it took that to happen for it to work but it's just to just to give you guys content that the hoop call would not exist at all dock in the arena would not exist at all any of my other projects would not exist at all without that happening and i will put on the instagram the video that i did um i think in like just one of my st- in like my old study um that i then posted in a whatsapp group that's ollie was in literally the day after he passed and what i want to say is this Number one, if you, you know, you may be a big basketball fan or a small basketball fan, but I think anyone can respect Kobe Bryant's legacy. I think that's clear, clear as day. And the way to respect someone's legacy and to keep them alive is through action. It's through learning from what that person's done, taking the lessons and the words that that person's done and putting them into action. That's the only thing that makes something real. So for those of you who are interested, those of you who have a rapport and a respect for Kobe Bryant and his legacy, my advice to you is have that mama mentality. Go for whatever you're procrastinating on today. 26th of January, it's always a big day. It it, it will now always be a big day of reflection for me. And I'll say to everyone, put into action what you've not been put into action. Don't be afraid. Crack on. And then reflect in a year. Next 26th of January, reflect, see how far you've come. Because we've come very far. So, Oli, okay, let's, let's, let's summarise this. So, so, someone who's a relative beginner to basketball or someone who wants to refresh their memory on Kobe and everything that he was about and why we would make an episode like this just for him. Give us three things that they should do today. Um, I think the, one of the main things is, as you've already sort of touched on, um, which I think if you wanted to learn more about um, Kobe and, you know, the way that he sort of looked at life is to look at um, some of the interviews that he, that he'd done after after his retirement. Because um, as, as yeah. we touched on before, it wasn't just on the court that he he had this. It was also off it and, and, and the businesses that he dealt with. And he would always, you know, one of the we sort of discussed one of the quotes is if you if if you want to if you want to do something that you love, you know, just you're just going to have to go and do it yourself, basically. So he was, you know, he he always had that that mamba mentality um, with, with anything. So um, yeah, well, it's, it's quite hard to sort of. It's hard to put it into into. Yeah, it is. You know, it try is. to bottle it down into into uh, one thing because there were so many different aspects about him. But totally with you, actually. Um... A lot of the, like, because obviously 
maybe when I was younger um, and I wasn't watching basketball so closely, he was in his prime. A lot of the influence he has on me is, as you completely said, stuff off the court and after retirement. So I really advise looking into that. I'll, I'll distill it down and I'll say number one is I think YouTube's your best friend today. YouTube's your best friend today, I'd, I'd agree. Uh, number one, look up Kobe Bryant interviews and just get a feel for the guy and his mentality and I think you'll really feel enriched. I think you really feel enriched. Number two, just look at Go- um, YouTube Kobe Bryant highlights or top 10 career plays and you'll just see, number one, pure skill. But often you'll see the... the um, Number one, you'll see pure skill. But number two, you'll see the the magnitude of the situations in which he performs. A lot of the highlights will be with the clock counting down, multiple people guarding him, and you'll see how he just delivers. And again, mentally, it will push you to want to deliver. Yeah, I think if you if you look at also, he was he was your favorite player's favorite player. Yeah, that's if you look yeah. back on. Yeah. If you, or one other thing to sort of look up on, you know, Google or YouTube is the way ex players, players now who are just coming into the league and how they would sort of describe Kobe. Yeah, that's and a how, idea. And pretty much you, you probably find at least one quote from one player describing how Kobe inspired them to get into, into basketball and yeah. to push to get into the NBA. Yeah, no, that's Ollie, you're a genius. That's brilliant. Literally, okay, YouTube, I've just done it now. YouTube people talking about Kobe and just while you're, while you're sitting just click on it and then you'll just be like wow okay this guy you know he's he's special he's special and if I had the power to turn back time I would never use it I don't think about it because then every moment that you go through means absolutely nothing but you can always go back and do it again so it loses its flavor it it's loses its its beauty when things are final, you know, moments won't ever come again. To be able to have the power to go back and re-experience those things is, it's silly to me. When you take that jersey off for the final time, how do you think you're going to feel? Very at peace with it and um, I'm very thankful you know, for, the, for the 20 years that I've had. And... Um, Ready to go. You know, as I said, passing away, death is something that, you know, we all, it's going to happen to all of us, but you live through your legacy, and I think his legacy is clear, it's incredible. Um, Ollie, I really thank you for taking time out to do this. I think it was good for both of us. And, um, Hopefully, listeners appreciate it and and understand how how great he was and how he can influence you. Yeah, so, let us know what your uh, your favorite Kobe moment as well is. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Just yeah, just comment on the YouTube, IG. You've got our number. Text us, um, and we'll get going. Um, apart from that, we will be recording on Thursday. Hoop Fridays will remain Hoop Fridays. Um, just to let you guys know, we'll, you'll hear from us again on Friday. But um, hope you enjoyed that. We'll fade the music out. And um, you guys take care. Stay safe. Cheers, guys. <laughs> this, has been, this has been absolutely beautiful, you guys. I can't believe it's come to an end. Um, you guys will always be in my heart. And uh, I sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. No words can describe how I feel about you guys. And... Uh, Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I, God, I love you guys. And uh, I love you guys. And uh, what can I say? Mamba out.